Hello all, my name is Krishna and welcome to my YouTube channel. So guys, this is the second tutorial of feature selection and in this video we are actually going to do the feature selection with the help of correlation and in this session we'll try to remove the features that are highly correlated. Okay, so make sure that you follow this whole video because there are a lot of things that I really want to mention and if you are new to this channel, please do subscribe the channel. We are pretty much near towards 250k subscribers. So make sure that you subscribe the channel guys. So let's begin. Uh, what we are going to do is that first of all, we are going to import the data set which is called as load underscore Boston. So this particular data set I'm actually going to use for this use case. And then I'm importing pandas matplotlib obviously for reading the data set and for plotting the diagrams. Uh, af uh, after that, I'll be actually loading the Boston in this uh, Boston data set. And in this data, it will nothing be but it will be a key value pairs, you know, it will be having data, it will be having target values, it will be having all the feature column names also, right. So uh, from side from this particular data, I'm going to create this data frame, and I'm going to use data dot data, which is my all my independent features in short, right, all the independent feature values. And if I really want to know my independent feature names, so I can use data dot feature names, feature underscore names. Again, this will be in the form of key value pairs, guys. So I'll just try to show you how it will look like. But let me just execute. Then my dependent feature is basically MEDV and the dependent feature value will be actually called as data dot target. And here you can specify any name that you actually want. So once I execute this two line, you'll be able to see that. And if I go and show you my data dot Suppose if I take feature names, so these are all my independent features name. Okay. So that same feature name I'm actually going to use over here. Now, if I go and write DF dot head, you can see that this is all my independent features and this is my dependent feature. One thing that you need to know about correlation is that guys, if an independent feature is highly correlated with dependent feature, we need not remove those kind of features because those features can play a very important role when we are training our machine learning models. But if we have independent features like suppose if I have this three independent features and this three independent features are highly correlated with each other by more than 90% then from this three I can just be using one okay so this way we can actually remove features because remember if this three features are highly correlated with each other right so this can behave like a duplicate features itself so in in the case of duplicate features which we will not take all the features itself we can take either one of this particular feature and that is what we are going to do with the help of correlation today in this particular session. So uh, after this, I will definitely create my X and Y, uh, that is my independent and dependent features. Again, I'll be dropping the MEDV in from access is equal to one and this will basically be my uh, output feature. So I'll execute this and this will be my DF dot head. Now, if I write X dot head also, you'll be able to see my X dot head. So these are all my X dot head. You can see that I'm not having any Y over here. Uh, that is my output feature MEDV. After this, uh, we should always try to do a train test split so that we will be able to over uh, will be able to uh, skip, uh, prevent the overfitting part. OK, so because all this particular information, like all this correlation will be only done on the training data set. So in order to prevent the overfitting, we will be actually doing a train test split and all the functionalities that I, I'll be planning to do right with respect to correlation. I'll just be doing on the training data set. And from the test data set, whatever, whatever things we do in the train, we'll do similar thing in the test data set. Suppose in my training data set, I find out that there are four features that are highly correlated. I'll remove directly from X train. Okay. Then in the X test, I'll not do the retest again. I'll not do the correlation retest over there. Okay. Because in the X test, we'll directly di remove those features itself. So I'll show you how we can do that. Again, you should not get confused with it. So over here, you can see that uh, first we'll start with doing a Pearson correlation. And in order to do that, I'm going to use Seaborn. Okay. And then I'm plotting a figure with figure size is 12 inch plus 12, uh, 12 cross 10. So that we'll be getting a bigger diagram over here. And then I will be able to find out the correlation by just using X underscore train dot C O R R. So if I write over here, okay, if I write over here dot C O R R you'll be able to see that this is basically my correlation for all my independent features. But definitely by just seeing the values and you know that Pearson correlation ranges between minus one to plus one. And by just seeing these particular values, you will not be able to understand so many things because those are actually numbers to make it into a much more visualized format. So once I take up this correlation, I'm going to create a heat map with correlation as this and not is equal to true. And there will be some coloring uh, which you can actually select. So if you write plt.cm. 
you can select any of these colors as you want okay it is up to you so i'm just going to keep the previous color and once i execute this you'll be able to see that this is the whole correlation now here you'll be able to see some features like tax tax to rad right it is 91 percent correlation now if i keep the threshold value as 90 percent then definitely either one of this particular feature can be used and one can be dropped okay so what we'll do is that and again there are so many numbers over here but what we'll do is that we will try to create a function which is called as correlation now inside this function it will take the data set like a, my x train data set and it will take some threshold value we'll say that this threshold value will say that at least it should be 70 percent correlated 80 percent correlated then only we will remove the feature something like that then inside this what we are going to do is that we are going to traverse through all the correlation matrix columns like we are going to traverse through all these things right all these columns that are actually mentioned over here and then we are going to see whether the correlation matrix with respect to this column like this l stat and crim l stat and zen l stat and indus l stat and cash so we are going to compare with each and every columns like in this particular way right suppose i want to compare this column with rad I want to compare tax column with rad right like this we will try to compare and we'll try to find out whether this correlation is greater than this threshold value from this particular matrix guys okay from this particular matrix now this threshold may be set by us right it may be 80 percent it may be 90 percent based on the number of features but most of the time in the general phenomena people use at 85 as a 85 percent uh, you know, 85% as the threshold. So here, what they are actually doing, they are iterating through each and every columns. And then with respect to each and every columns over here, because there, there is another loop, which is called as J, right? For J in range of I. Now, when this correlation is actually happening, they'll check with I and J. I may be this column, J may be this column, right? So those kind of, those type of column when the threshold is greater than, thre when, when the correlation is greater than that particular threshold, we are going to take that particular column, store it in a column name and add that in a list. Okay. Add that in a set. Sorry. This is a set that has been created. So we'll try to add that in a set so that duplicate entries will not go with respect to the columns. And finally, we'll be returning that particular correlation. Just go through this particular code, guys. I think I have taken it from that, uh, one of the SK learn, uh, I think I was seeing something with respect to correlation in sklearn uh, web page. So there I was able to find out this particular code. Okay. Again, again, this is not written by me. So I just copied it. I did not want to put much of my head, but just by seeing this particular code, we'll be able to understand how it actually works. So once we execute this, you'll be able to see that we, this function is ready. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to call this particular function. I'm going to give my extreme. And again, remember guys, this process I will not do for X test. As I said, to, uh, to, to avoid overfitting, I'm not going to do it in X test separately, right? This correlation will only be done in X train. And suppose if I find out four features are highly correlated over here, we'll remove that four features from X train also from X test also. That is how we are preventing overfitting. Okay. So uh, over here, I have used correlation. I've used X train and threshold. Suppose if I give it as 0.8. And once I execute, you'll be able to see that only one feature is actually there when I'm trying to find out the length, which is that feature. If I execute it, you'll be able to see tax is the feature over here. And obviously you can see that tax with respect to rad, right? In each first tax is actually coming with respect to rad. You'll be able to see that it is 0 0.91. So it is in the real scenario. I can either use tax or either I, I can use rad, right? So in this particular case, I'm trying to remove tax. Okay. Tax column but I'll be using rad column. Now suppose if I change the threshold to 0.7. Now in this particular case, I'm able to find out four features that are highly correlated. So uh, this age, let's see, age, 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 it is there somewhere like 0.74. This is highly correlated with NOx. So either NOx can be there, age can be there. In this particular case, I want to remove age, okay? So similarly, if I go in with respect to this, this column you can see over here, you have, uh, la, 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 la. okay, you also have negative correlation. So it is also considering the negative correlated part also, which is highly negative correlated. Now in this particular case, you can see that I have this inside this, I think I have nowhere positive values, but here I have minus 0.77 with Nox. Again, uh, this is getting removed. This can be removed. But what I would consider is that we cannot skip the negative correlation over here. Okay. Uh, I would definitely say that, uh, you know, when, when we are computing 
over here correlation of i comma j i think if i remove this apps absolute method i think that negative correlation thing will get handled okay but here i think in this particular code they have not handled that negative correlation part because uh, uh, whenever there is a negative correlation they are converting that into a positive value with the help of this absolute method okay this absolute method actually does that particular part so what i believe is that i think we should not use this uh, if i don't use this let me see if i don't use this how it will work now see you can see that i'm just getting three right so if i don't use this apps method you will be able to see that um, you know we'll not be getting that negative correlated uh, feature name okay now we have nox so let's see with respect to nox uh, where is nox so here you have 0.75 you have 0.74 with respect to nox you are having similar columns like index and age so you can actually remove nox itself age is also anyhow getting removed okay then you have tax column tax column over here is somewhere that is present over here. again you have 0.72 you have 0.91 obviously tax can be removed with the uh, other than the rad it can definitely be removed we have already seen that okay so if you really want to consider the negative correlation also just use apps otherwise uh, in the better scenario i think negative correlated features are also very very important like if x is increasing y is decreasing we should not remove those kind of features because that may be helpful in building the machine learning algorithms okay so right now i'll just keep it like that because i took it out took from that particular sklearn article uh, now you'll here you'll be able to see four features and then after this, what I'm going to do, I'm going to find out, okay, this is the highly correlated feature. I'm going to directly drop from my X-train. So I'll write X-train dot drop correlated feature with X is equal to one. Then you see this again, I'm not applying this whole function on my X-test data. I'm directly dropping it, right? So similarly, you can actually drop it over here. Now this was with respect to a simpler data set. Sometime you will be having a huge data set. Now in this particular data set, you will be able to see that I've used this sanitator uh, dot C csv so here you will be able to see that we are having sanitator customer satisfaction this is the data set that is actually present which has around 371 columns so uh, for this particular case again what i am doing i have read this data set i've read only 10,000 records i've dropped the target uh, and uh, kept all my independent features in x y is having all my dependent feature this is my x train split train test split i'll execute this and this is in the similar way I have actually plotted uh, the heat map and right now the heat map does not look that good because this color that you actually see right it's <laughs> definitely because there are 371 features so you have to see everything minute in detailed way so that is actually not possible right now in this particular graph so what we are going to do is that we are just going to use that same correlation function and let's see how many are highly correlated. So when I try to execute this, they are on 193 columns that are highly correlated. And if I go and see, these are all my column names that are highly correlated, that are more correlated with more than 80%. Okay. If I make it as 90%, then also you'll be able to see at least we'll be getting 50s to 70s or 156. So this correlated features are there. Now in this scenario, I would consider 90% to be highly correlated because we have many number of features. And finally, what I can do is that I can just write X train extrain dot drop and i am going to use uh la 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 correlated features comma axis is equal to one so once i execute this you'll be able to see my extrain and similarly i'll be able to do with the help of x test also so guys i hope you like this particular video i hope you understood it please make sure that uh, or research whether this absolute should be used when we are doing correlation we, uh, because if one and the other features are negatively correlated those are some kind of important features uh, uh, also because suppose something is increasing and because of that my other independent feature is decreasing so should we consider this kind of scenario or not just try to explore it just like try to put the comments uh, in your in, in this particular comment uh, of this particular video guys and uh, yes so i hope you like this particular video please do subscribe to the channel if you have not really subscribed i'll see you all in the next video have a great day thank you one and all bye bye